MS-DOS was the primary operating system for PCs during the home computer boom of the 80s and 90s. With almost 20 years of DOS gaming, there are some great titles for you to try. But setting up an emulator can be a bit tricky, but not anymore. So let's play some DOS games. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The IBM PC was launched in August 1981, along with version 1 of the Microsoft Disk Operating System, or, or MS-DOS. Now at the time, the computer was squarely aimed at the business market, with a price tag of $1500, which equates to around about 5500 in today's money, um, with most of its software then being office-oriented applications. But of course, with all the hype and success of the home computer gaming market, it didn't take long for DOS gaming to take off. Now remember that, that although these machines were the first PCs, we were in a time long before Windows. Uh, DOS was the command line operating system like all the others of the time, uh, and you can still get a glimpse of it in, in modern Windows by opening up a command prompt. So, so the black screen that you will see with the C colon backslash prompt and the flashing cursor it is effectively DOS as it was. But of course, it's no longer compatible with the 80s and 90s software. So this MS-DOS was the base operating system for PCs up until around about 1995, when Windows 95 began to process of moving away from the reliance on this MS-DOS base layer. But that still gave almost two decades of DOS gaming development, which were really the formative years of our modern PC gaming scene. So fast forward to today. We, we can of course treat DOS gaming machines as another retro system that we can emulate. And indeed, I have created a number of videos doing exactly that. And again, I'll put links to those down in the description down below. But Instead of going through the whole process of setting up an emulator ourselves, what if there was an easy way to get our DOS emulator optimised um, for all the games, give it a great looking front end, and allow us to simply browse all of the DOS games and simply run them at the click of a mouse button? Well, that's exactly what we're going to have a look at today. So the project we're going to be looking at is called ExoDOS. And this is a fantastic DOS gaming project. So if you head over to their website at retro-exo.com slash exodos.html, you'll find the full project information and download pages. So basically, ExoDOS is a complete DOS box emulation system that's been set up to run inside of the LaunchBox retro gaming front end. Now, um, it, both of these, um, DOSBox Emulator and the LaunchBox front end, I have made videos on those previously, so do, do have a look at those if you want more information about those in particular. Um, but again, um, ExoDOS is set up to take all of the hassle of setting those up out of, out of your way. So, um, so again, the, the project coders for ExoDOS have worked hard to optimise this um, setup for each of the actual DOS games. So it uses a number of DOSBox versions rather than just a single, and then various configurations to make sure that every one of more than 7,500 DOS games runs smoothly and accurately. Now, if you have ever tried to set this up, a uh, DOSBox up yourself, um, you'll know that this is no easy task. So if we go over to the main project page then, if you scroll down past the project information, you'll get to the main download links. Now this is a big project. The full download consists of a 650 gigabyte um, game and emulation code download with a further 160 gigabytes of then media and video. Now downloading this full package is actually a really good option as you actually have everything on hand then for every single game. However, if you don't want all 7,500 games in one go, you can opt for the light version. So this installs all of the emulators and the full games lists so that you can actually browse all the titles, but it doesn't actually download the game files themselves until you need them. 
So this comes in at a five gigabyte download, which of course is much faster and less drive um, hard drive hungry. Now, either download though is going to be um, supplied as a torrent feed. So if you're not familiar with torrents, these are peer to peer network um, uh, operations where you can download the files from a number of other users on a sort of file sharing system. Now it is totally safe to use uh, as all the file access is done through the torrent client application. Now the torrent that I use is called Qubit Torrent. So if you head over to the main website for this, and again, I'll put the links in the description down below, you can simply download the application, install it, and then we're ready to go. So back on the Exodos site, um, you just need to download and run the torrent file for the download that you are interested in. This should then show up inside Qubit Torrent. And all you have to do now is to just make sure that you specify a save folder for your downloaded files, then select all the items and start the download. Now this of course will take a while to download depending on your internet connection. So let's let that run through and come back when it's finished. So once those files have downloaded, you'll find them in your download folder. So there's a couple of files we can have a look at here. Uh, one is the catalog, so if I open up that, this really is a, a bit of information about the various bits of software and the software companies that are going to be in the DOS gaming pack. And again, it's, it's worth just having a look at that just to see uh, and get a little bit of history um, about the, the, the project. The second one then is the ExoDOS manual. And again, this gives you all the full instructions on how to use the, the software package and, and how to install it. And also then a little bit of history about how the project came about. So just do, do have a look through those, that they are, they are quite interesting. But the bit that we need to now um, run is of course the setup batch file. So this is gonna be a Windows command prompt um, batch file. So we simply double click on that. It will pop us up a little DOS terminal window and we just follow through the instructions here. So we're going to press C to this first page and we're not going to be merging any of the EXO um, DOS packs. And we didn't um, install the content add-on pack, so we're just going to press a key and that then should start the installation process. So we can see everything is now ready. Um, it's going to extract things um, and, set and get going. So let's just press any key and that should start it going. So once LaunchBox has been extracted, we now need to extract the rest of the package. And again, as you can see, this is going to take a little bit longer, um, around about th sort of 30 minutes. So let's, let's run that and we'll come back when it's, when it's completed. So once the extraction is finished, there's a number of options we need to set up. And the first is whether we want to include adult themed games. And these are things like Leisure Suit Larry. So I'm just gonna say no to this to allow them to show up in my lists. Next, we need to specify whether we want our games to play full screen or in windowed mode. So I'm going to show them full screen and then select our primary desktop resolution. So I'm going to set mine to medium here for 1080p and then our aspect correction. So we do want this to be corrected so our games look correct on the screen. So I'm just going to say yes to that. Blow it out your ass. So after a helpful comment there from Duke Nukem, we can then say whether we want to have a desktop icon. So I'm going to say no to that for mine. And we are now ready to play our Exodos DOS games. So once Exodos has finished extracting all of its files, inside your download folder, you should find that you have this full set of files now. Now this includes, of course, now the launch box um, front end files, and of course, all the setup then files for our Exodos so that it can work within LaunchBox. Now, if you haven't already installed LaunchBox on your system, and this is your first time installing it, then everything is set up for you. All you need to do is to launch the LaunchBox EXE file, and that will take you straight into LaunchBox with all of the MS-DOS games all set up. Now, if like me, you actually use LaunchBox as your main retro gaming center, then we can now um, start to import all of the ExoDOS settings and files into our existing setting. And that just simply is a matter of just copying some files across. 
Now, the instructions on how to do that is part of the um, installation manual. So if you go to, into the Exodus manual, which is one of those PDF files we downloaded at the beginning, and you scroll down to the importing into an existing setup section, you'll see here um, that we've we've already gone through the stage where we've run the setup um, uh, yeah, uh, batch, file, batch file. Um, we already have LaunchBox installed, so we're going to make sure that we have no versions of LaunchBox running. And then we're simply going to copy the contents of these folders from our Exodos LaunchBox installation into our main LaunchBox installation. So let me go ahead and do that, and then let's see how that looks once we get into LaunchBox. So I'm in Windows File Explorer here, and I have the main window here opened up on my Exodos installation folder, and you can see all the Exo um, files in here. And over on this side panel, I have my main uh, LaunchBox installation set up here so that I can copy files across into that. So all we have to do is go through the list of files in the manual. So the first one then is in the data um, folder. The platforms needs to be acro copied across into the data folder in our um, LaunchBox installation. We then need to copy our playlists across into the data folder. We then need to copy our in our manual section, so back into the Exodos into manuals. And then we need to copy our MS-DOS folder into the manuals folder in our installation. We then need to copy our into back into Exodos, and we need to look in our images folder. And we need to copy our MS-DOS images into the images folder in our LaunchBox installation. So next we need to go back into our Exodus folder. Now if you've installed the full package, you'll need to copy across some music files. Um, so again, going into your music folder and the MS-DOS folder from that needs to be copied across into the music folder in LaunchBox. But for us, we, we just need to go on to the final step then, which is to copy across the MS-DOS videos folder from the video section, again, into the same folder in our um, LaunchBox installation. So that's all of the uh, setup files gone across. Lastly, then, we just need to copy this entire EXO folder into the root of our LaunchBox installation. So it's going to copy it across from there and copy it into the LaunchBox. So once everything has copied over, we should be ready to go. So if I boot up LaunchBox and we drop into that, we should find under our computer section an MS-DOS section. And inside that, we should now find all of our games. Now, because I've used the light version, um, it's downloaded all of the game artwork, which we can see here. So if I click on a game, you'll see the artwork coming up on the side here. But the actual games themselves haven't been downloaded, which is why we get a much smaller download. So each of these files now will trigger a download if we try and run a game. So let, let, let's find a game which we want to play. So let's try Duke Nukem. So if I double click on that, or if I single click on it, we will get the game details coming up. If I double click on it, it should then go into the game download um, process. So the downloads are handled by a BitTorrent client. Um, so um, it's, it's dropped into a Windows command terminal line. And you can see here it's telling me that the game hasn't been installed. So yes, I would like to install this game. It says the game hasn't been downloaded yet, so it hasn't downloaded the zip file for it yet. So if I say yes to that, it should now go off and start the BitTorrent client. And you can see that's coming up. So it's waiting now for a connection to download that file. And there we have it. And that should now be coming down for us. So we just have to wait now until that file comes down and gets downloaded fully. So once that's downloaded all the files, we should be ready to start getting that game set up. So once the files are installed, it's going to be asking us how we want to run this game. So we initially set up our global configuration settings when we were installing um, Exodos. So if we want to change those, we can, or we can just say no here to keep our current settings. Now it's asking us if we want to change our graphics filters. And again, we've, we've already set those up globally, so I'm just going to say no to this. 
And that should then start booting up the actual game itself. When games start, Exodus does offer you a number of configuration um, options. So here it's asking us which um, sound card we want to use. So we'll just run with the standard Sound Blaster 16. And once we select that, then the actual game boots up and we are into Duke Nukem. So at this point, we are now directly into our DOS gaming machine and we can run that just as if we were sat in front of our 1990s PC. So that's ExoDOS all set up and ready to go. And you should now have access to the full 7,500 DOS games. So all that's left is to simply find some and play them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for lots more gaming and making and electronic projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.